as most commercial strawberry growers know, when you receive your plants, that's when the real work begins. Um, most growers are going to receive plants in one of three forms. Dormant bare root, strawberry tips, or plug plants in trays. Today at the University of Arkansas Division of Agriculture Research Station at Fayetteville, we've received our plants in plug form. These plants have come in boxes and they're in trays and in this particular case there are five trays per box. These plants are stacked in here pretty tight. The first thing you want to do that I'd like to mention is is that before while maybe while you're ordering your plants you might want to think about the distance between the nursery and your farm and how long it's going to take for those plants to get there. Ideally you would want to try to minimize the amount of time that those plants are in transportation or in boxes. Um, immediately when the plants you receive the plants you need to have a place to put them if they're not going directly to the field and we'll talk more about that as we go into this film. Um, the first thing I like to do is get my plants. You want to inspect the trays. You want to start pulling your plants out <clears throat> and you want to inspect them for several different things. The first thing is look at all, get a lot of your plants out, a lot of your trays and look for general signs of disease, look at the plant health. Uh, one thing that you might look at too, and it's very important to look for, is the presence of spider mites. Um, however, probably the first thing that I like to do is pull out several of the plugs and just look at the roots and how much moisture is in the root ball. Because if you have to set the plants back for a few days before planting, um, the amount of root development may give you an idea how long you can do that. If they're already starting to appear to be root bound, then you might want to try to get them in the field as quickly as possible. If they're relatively loose rooted, you probably have a few more days. Um, but probably trying to get them to the field as soon as possible would be best. But uh, I like to actually let them lay out and acclimate outside the boxes for about one to two days. Um, so, but again, I'm looking at the plants, and one thing that I do is when I'm looking at strawberry plants, especially those that are going to be used under protected culture, such as in greenhouses or high tunnels is you want to assess the mite situation as early as possible on the plants. The plants should be clean, but you want to know that before you, you take the plants to your field. So I will use a hand lens or a magnifying glass and look at several of the leaves on the different, in the different trays. And you don't have to inspect all the leaves or all the trays, but if you find mites, it might be, it, you want to know that they're there and you'll want to come up with a plan to deal with them at some point. Um, once, you take your, once you take your plants out of the boxes, Selecting a site for the trays is very important. Uh, some of the considerations that I think about are what is the current temperature at the time, what's the sunlight situation, is it cloudy, is it sunny, is it hot or is it cool, is it rainy. The most important thing with these plants though is making sure they have plenty of water as soon as you get your plants out, it's good, even if the plugs look nice and wet, it's good to go ahead and douse them with some water, water them thoroughly. Um, set your plants, your plugs, in an area that is going to be free 
of animal traffic not in and I mean if you have dogs or large pets you don't want animals going through trampling your plants but one of the things that that we particular at the University of Arkansas Research Station Division of Agriculture Research Station have to pay attention to is rabbits and most time if we have small plants especially ones that rabbits like to eat uh, that we're setting out we always usually we always put chicken wire or some kind of barrier around them just to safeguard against that we all know how expensive they are we don't want them to get eaten or damaged before we put them in the field. Um, another thing that we might we might consider too, if you're getting more than one variety, especially if you have a uh, multiple varieties, either set aside sections for each cultivar, or label the individual trays when you set them out, so you don't get them mixed up. Just a helpful hint. Because you'll, if you, you can have a lot of trays, and it can, you can get them confused in a in a hurry. Um, <clears throat> once we set our once we set our trays in place, uh, one of the things that we talked about the conditions in which you uh, in which you receive the plants. And I'm going to use today as an example. Today it's over 90 degrees, the wind's blowing, we have full sun. Um, we've decided to put our plants under a shade house at least for one or two days. And we may go ahead and move them to full sun depending on what the weather does. But we feel with the, uh, with the stress of being shipped, put in boxes and shipped, and taking them out into this in these conditions we feel better by keeping them in the shade house um, they'll eventually be in full sun anyway but that's that's what we're how we're treating these right now earlier I mentioned though that we um, I like to see the plants set out a day to two one to two days before we actually put them in the beds and the reason I like to do that is is like after they're scrunched down inside the boxes that gives them time to kind of the leaves kind of straighten back out and point towards the sunlight and I think it kind of gives a little bit of use that time for a buffer to let them kind of recuperate from the shipping process.